I understand that I've got uh, Afeso Collins on the line, who is uh, one of the mayoral candidates for Auckland in the upcoming local government elections. And I'm sure that he is very concerned about what happened overnight in the city. Hi, Afeso, can you hear me? No, it's Alofa Ali. Yes, I can hear you fine. Thank you for joining me. Now, as I was saying, you know, seven incidents overnight, all related to gangs. You must be really concerned. Yeah, and that's the feedback that I've been receiving from parents, youth workers, and and speaking with our local area commander this morning. There's quite a bit of concern in the community. For, for some in our community, it's it's gone from probably a level of anxiety to to quite a bit of frustration because we've seen this happen a little bit too much over the mm-hmm. last couple of years, in particular. And I think a lot of parents uh, they're very weary of what's going on. We understand that these are in most cases isolated to gang activity, mm-hmm. but someone's going to get caught in the crossfire and I think the district commander Jill Rogers uh, um, covered that today and she covered it well saying we don't need that to happen and we don't want to wait until something like that does No, no absolutely right I can imagine that especially in some of the suburbs, um, you know, there around your neck of the woods in South Auckland, um, you know, they must be really fed up with the recurring violence that's happening and, and also maybe a bit frightened now yeah, fed up and frightened are probably good adjectives to be using in this situation. What we know is that uh, there've been a there's a recent announcement saying that there'd be more police. The government's committing to more police, and in our discussions, a number of our parents are saying we'd love to see more community constables, and mm-hmm. I think that's a really good idea because I've often said that you know, if, in my view, uh, social workers in schools or youth workers are just as valuable as police officers at this mm. stage. The community. Community constables understand the community. They get in and around. They understand local businesses because they're moving around the community all the time. And the approach they take means that they often know which young people are concerned, where the houses are that uh, Jill Rogers would have been referring to today. Mm. And so they can move quite quickly. And you know, young people start to trust them. You all understand, Arnie, that for many of our communities, especially here in South Auckland, there's been a historical distrust mm. in the way we work with the police. But community constables do things a little bit different. And I think the young people have a, a growing sense of trust. And so when you've got that sense of trust, young people will, will talk to them about daily things. And that's what I think the police really need here. So, uh, you know, I'm glad that there's going to be more police, but mm. I think we should be focusing them on principles on the beat because that's where we're going to have a really good bridge between what's, what we're seeing in the community today. And, of course, that's really applicable when we're seeing such young, young children, really. We're talking about children sometimes, um, not teens. Yeah. You know, you, you're seeing reports of 10, 11-year-olds involved in uh, in gang activity and ram raids and that kind of thing. It, it really it, it signals to us that there's something not right about these circumstances these children are being um, brought up in or, or the lack of support that they have, I suppose. Would you agree with that? Yeah, there's a number of things you're, you're identifying mm-hmm. there, and I think it's important that when we're talking about these communities, we're often talking about communities that are pretty impoverished, that, that, that a lot of this is driven by poverty. Mm. I think the other thing to, to know, and I think your listeners will be interested to know, that in some of our poorest communities across New Zealand, we've got up to 25% of 16 to 24-year-olds. Now, that's not the age group you're specifying, yeah. but our, our needs, and that's young people who are not in education, employment, or training. Mm. So what that suggests to us is, you know, if you're young and you're exposed uh, to any kind of influence from the youth gangs because you're not in school or training, then naturally you're going to head down that track. And that's why I think it's so important that we've got youth workers or social workers in schools, that we've got young people who are connected and really plugged into schools and doing well, because schools actually give us a basis to encourage our young people to aspire to do things, to, to be creative and do the things that they're good at. And it also opens up the doors for sports where they'll be playing netball, rugby, touch, they'll be rowing. All of those things happen in a schooling kind of sports environment. And when our young people are disconnected from those areas, then, of course, they're, they're more than open to and susceptible to youth gangs. And you know, even the Police Association have said that a lot of the young men who are joining youth gangs and heading in that direction are young men who, are, who feel unloved and unwanted. And if mm. the Police Association is saying that, we know that in the community, mm. then let's make sure that we've got good programs that support parents, that's providing a whole lot of wraparound support. That's what I think the community really needs. Absolutely. I know 
when when I was at school, my dad said to to me and my sisters, "You you choose sports to play because it's going to keep you out of trouble." So there's no option. Yeah. <laughs> so I definitely understand that that approach. We we all played a lot of sport, and it it keeps you busy and it keeps you engaged in positive relationships with your peers and that kind of thing. So um, absolutely, yeah, I could definitely identify with that. Um, now you've identified as well some some social issues there. In your bid to become mayor this year, uh, what are your, uh, I guess, priorities in terms of the underlying things that are at play here and how you would address them as mayor of Auckland? Yeah, look, I think poverty is probably the key driver. And so there's a lot of rhetoric around get hard on crime. I Mm -hmm. think the approach that I would take is let's get hard on poverty. Let's make sure that our young people are plugged into good youth programs, community service programs, which are going to give them a a sense of belonging, which is what they really need. You know, I don't want to sound trying to be clever, but if you go back to even Maslow's hierarchy of needs, if young people are getting... (laughs) If young people have shelter, because this is, I mean, this is what the youth gangs offer. Yeah, they offer shelter, right. camaraderie, friendship, and and then what they do is they give you all of those things. You can get a feed because you'll be hungry, and then they make you do really naughty things, really poor mm. things, or you know, anti-social behaviour. We call it by with the ram raids, and we've seen that, and it's it's a logical step. So the logical step, the other direction is how do we ensure that families are supported, and that's what I want to be as a mayor. Let's bring Bring everybody together. I've been really impressed by the way the police have made themselves available. They're talking to our communities. Mm. You know, I've, I picked up the phone this morning. Straight away, I was on the phone with the area commander. He said, "If so, these are the things we're doing." So mm. when we've got community leaders, community networks engage with one another. People are going to know that. You know, we're going to know. We know the family or the far know that's going to need support. No one's judging anybody. We just know that these families need support. We've got to get more youth workers on the ground. Mm-hmm. We've got to get our community facilities in Auckland working really well because young people aren't, it's it's the after school hours which is our concern. If mm. our young people are connected and plugged in at school, then it means that after between that kind of 4 and 9, 10 p.m., those hours when mum and dad might be finishing late, there's no one really at home. Those are the times to run really good youth programs because that's when they're away from the school and look I'd, I'd challenge the churches as well um, mm. we've got a lot of churches here in South Auckland this is the time for the church to step up to say well you know we're not proselytizing and trying to turn you into one of our our local church people but we've got <laughs> facilities hey you know we've got some big churches here Arnie, in South Auckland they can, they can open up the churches we've got churches with basketball courts huge mm. grass areas we, we could run you know um, we still uh, uh, run youth touch comps that I, I'm a part of, you know, whether you've got youth sports camps. And it's those things that community organisations, churches are able to run. They can run them. And I think I want to challenge community organisations and especially churches to really get involved and say, let's work together, whether it's with council, with the police or local organisations, let's make these facilities available because we want our young people to feel safe. And it's not hard. You know, mm. we, we used to just buy the, you know, the dollar or the $2 the bread, grab some butter and, and jam or peanut butter. You know, the kids <laughs> love the toast and it's not expensive for them to have toast with us, you know, a Milo. Yeah. And then they'll go home, maybe have something a bit bigger for dinner. But, you know, these programs are not going to cost us thousands of dollars. What they will cost us is a bit of time, commitment and energy. And I think most of our community are up for that. Yeah, on a, on a bit of a philosophical level, I guess I... I really identify with uh, what you've said there about utilising churches. Um, as you say, particularly in South Auckland, there are lots of churches. And, um, you know, without um, having a, a religious discussion about the, the merits or, or um, uh, I guess, downfalls of religion, the social role that churches have played um, over history uh, is something that when perhaps people were less inclined to engage with religion, they then missed out on all of those social um, aspects that the church provided, like having a space for yeah. um, the youth to congregate after school and play basketball, whatever, like you said. So yeah. how do you get peop- how do you get the churches to um, extend that social um, role and say to all these children, you're welcome here when there might be a a reluctance around the religious aspect, for example. 
you. Look, I, I've been working with a number of churches. So, you know, my, some people might know that my, my father was a, a church minister mm. himself. And so I've, I've got a, an AOG background because dad was involved with the Pentecostal movement. Mm-hmm. But I've been working with really good, you know, traditional churches, the Presbyterians, the Methodists, Equippers are here in Manico. Mm-hmm. Um, they've got... And, all of them are open and they're saying, yeah, bring us along. And so what all this is, is coordinating. We're reaching out to the churches. They are more than happy and they've been reassuring me. They said, if you don't worry, we're not going to preach to anyone. We yeah. just want to provide a safe environment. And, you know, you pull out the basketball, um, <laughs> yeah, out comes the competitive nature. I don't know what you were like at sport, Arnie, but <laughs> yeah, I was one of the worst. <laughs> yeah, I tell you. And, you know, if... If I was, you know, you almost have the right, I don't know, there's almost like a legal right to accidentally bowl someone over in basketball (laughs) or or touch or something. And, you know, sorry, it was touch. I didn't mean to tackle you. But, you know, I say that in jest, but what that does is it actually lets off a bit of steam. It does, yeah. when When we're running around, the science is clear. It says when we're running around, when we've got the the heart rate up and we're sweating, Mm. it actually does good things for our brain. It makes us feel really good about ourselves. And that's all we're asking of the churches. We've got some great churches out here who are doing all those Mm. things. And this is now about making sure that people know about these programs, that we're connecting with schools and saying, hey, if some of these young people are going home to empty houses because mum and dad don't get home till six o'clock. Mm. Why not send them along to your local equippers just down there, down, down the road near Denny's and Manuko, mm. and they can hang out there. They'll be safe, you know, we'll sign them in. We'll make sure that everyone who's running the youth program has, you know, full youth qualifications so that, you know, so it's all people, our parents can trust the mm. program. And then they'll be there, and you, you know, toast isn't. It's, it's not a. That's not a four course meal or anything. <laughs> but it's hey, we can. It's, it just means that all we're really asking the church for is, is for facilities. And council can do the same thing when we do yeah. it here. I, We've got our community, our gym next door. Right? We've got mm-hmm. um, swimming programs. And so you know, that if the young people come along, go to the gym, do some exercise. And, and actually, it's a chance for mentors. You know, there's programs like Project mm. K and and where you've got uh, old, older brother, older sister who come in and they say, hey, look, I'll spend an hour with these young people. Because I know there's a lot of people. I, I was going to say our age, Arnie, but I think I'm a whole lot older than <laughs> I'm 31, but, so I feel, I feel oh, okay, like yes. I'm... In the older age group now. <laughs> well, well, there's, let's just say, and in, in, in the thirty-one plus category, there's a lot of there's a lot of us professionals who are saying, "Look, I I can spare an hour after mm. work. You know, I could finish work at four o'clock and come and hang out with the youth program." And you know, the young people love it. We 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 put a, a basketball team together, and they absolutely wasted us. You know, we're all the oldies <laughs> who thought. You know, back in the day where we could dunk. But what it does is it gives the young people a, a real way to channel that energy, whether it's negative or positive energy, they're mm. channeling it because they want to beat the older people at basketball. They're channeling that energy when you're talking to them and saying, hey, this is what it's like to host a radio program. Yeah. I can talk to young people about this is what it's like to be a counsellor at Auckland mm. Council. And what we're doing is we're exposing them to something different because if you and I don't, hey, if we don't take good hold of that responsibility Mm. and treat it as our responsibility, then the youth gangs will say, that's okay, you leave that gap for us and we'll take it because... Yeah, I've, you know, I've, I've researched youth gangs, and that's exactly it's the simplest way to do it. They know when to, to jump in, mm-hmm. and they know the kids that are kind of on the periphery. And, and you know, if mum and dad are having challenges at home, they know how to pick up those kids, and yeah. that's who we've got to reach out to as well. And like you say, it's, it's Maslow's hierarchy of needs. They know how to tick those boxes. And, and obviously, I, I can absolutely get on board with all of these kind of social ideas um, on the supply side, the, the kids' side. How do we stop the um, the demand from gangs for these young people? How do we deal with the demand side of things? Yeah, we absolutely have to cut the oxygen off. Mm. You're, you're, you're right. So, so the way we, we cut them off is we we get in early, so we, we get the preventative measures in now. What what my research showed uh, from some years ago, working with youth gangs, is they were recruiting, and this is going back ten years. They mm. were recruiting as early as intermediate age. Yeah. So when when I see young kids, you know. 
nine, ten involved in the ram raids. It doesn't surprise me, given what I know from mm. the youth gang activity. So, so that's one aspect of it. But I think the the ways we cut off the the supply chain to the youth gangs is we support families, as we make sure that uh, often it's it's uh, a single mum at home who's mm-hmm. raising a lot of these uh, young boys, and we've got to get beside them. What we know from Auckland City Mission is that the highest levels of poverty and people going in for support from the city mission is young uh, Māori Pacific uh, Mm -hmm. ethnic women who are solo parents. So let's not judge them. Let's just accept the fact that they're doing the best they can. They're Mm going to need support. So what does that support come in? It might be an increase in the benefits, might be making sure that there's uh, there's a a nurse or doctor at school checking in on the kids, making sure they're healthy and making sure there's enough food in the house. Mm -hmm. Those are the stresses we've got to help relieve from those whānau. And then the other, so that means that the kids are safe, they're they're Mm -hmm. being treated well at home. But it also means that teachers have an an understanding around where the recruitment might be happening. What I also found in the research that I did around these gangs is that the gangs were cleverly trying to recruit in the church because they knew that a lot of our young people are churched. And so, you you know, when you you understand the signs and the signals that they give, you know, they're not going to come up and say, hi, my name's Ephes and I'm from this particular gang, come (laughs) join. But they but they give off signals and then it's come hang out with me for a little while and all of a sudden you're getting big feeds, you're getting combos yeah. at McDonald's. If if all you've if all you've ever been given is toast and suddenly you're getting Big Mac combos, mm. then you're gonna want the Big Mac combos. And so we've got to cut that level of connection to the gangs because if we start the gangs with any attention, any rec- recruitment, that they'll have a natural die off point and mm-hmm. that's what we've got to be doing. So look I'm I'm always interested in the preventative measures. Right. I think the immediate steps we're taking. I, I, you know, I re- applaud the police. They, they're out there, they're taking the guns, any kind of gun they can see, they're taking it off. We're talking to our communities. If you know of any of your people who, you know, any of your whanau who might have guns, let's take them and hey, let, let's just make sure we get rid of them. So those are some of the immediate steps we do, but it's the preventative measures by mm-hmm. having youth workers, social workers, uh, community constables on the ground working with our young people. That's going to make the long-term difference that we need. And just before um, we uh, say goodbye, um, what are the other priorities that you have for uh, your run for mayor? What's What are the other things that you want people to know you care about? Yeah, I, I care about connection, Arnie. I think it's been a tough couple of years for Aucklanders in particular. You look at the lockdowns, people have been separated for a long time. We've got businesses that have closed or have struggled. Mm. We've got people who've lost jobs over that time. And I think Aucklanders are keen to reconnect. And you know, we've moved to a hybrid model of work. So how does what does that mean for our localities? Do we, how are we shopping local? We might still be home one or two days a week. So reconnection is really key for me. How do we reinvent? engage with one another how do we interact again i think social interaction is, is key mm. and i want to be a, a, a my my hope is to be a vision sorry is to be a mayor who's got the vision to bring people together and that's not just people locally mm. that's bringing people back in from overseas because i think we've got a tourist uh, economy that we really want to give some energy to and that's going to happen as more and more people are coming in. and you know, we see uh, the borders are opening and it's important that people have the have a strong feeling that auckland is an attractive place to come to. Mm. I think the other thing I want to be, be sure of is that we've got good infrastructure. So one of the things I've been talking about, the first thing I said was I would like to see fair free public transport mm-hmm. and that means, you know, the Helen Clark Foundation said that for, for poorer families up to 30% of their income goes towards transport. So if oh, we wow. can relieve them, yeah, and it's a lot of money. So yeah. if we can relieve families of that transport cost, let's get them on the bus, the train, straight away so they can get to where they, they need to be. And, and I understand you control. practice what you preach in this regard you you catch the bus yourself <laughs> yeah yeah look, look, look i'll be honest there's there's the odd day where i've got to use the car but wherever possible mm-hmm. i'm i'm definitely most days of the week i can just catch the train my challenge at the moment arnie is when i'm trying to get from a, a meeting in money deal and then yeah. i have to go to green heights it's a bit hard to say i'll be there in less than an hour when it would take me much longer but hey but, you're understanding the I, struggles that, that everyone in Auckland yeah, i, I think, know <laughs> 
<laughs> so, so I think, you look, know, fear-free public transport, getting people around, but we've got to make sure we've got frequency. You know, it's much easier in your life when you turn up to the bus stop and then five minutes later you think, oh, mm. the bus is here, you know what I mean? And it should be that natural that we should just get to the bus stop. We know that a, a bus is coming in the next 10 or 15 minutes, yeah. but that also means we've got to stretch the network. We've got to get to the parts of Auckland that don't have good public transport services. Yeah. So, look, I think those are just some of the things that we're working on, but I'm really keen to see us working well together. I think mm-hmm. for two long there's you know, I, I think there's been a real wealthy poorer divide in Auckland I think we can do things together and you know I, I, this is an opportunity for all of us to say COVID has affected us in multiple ways how do we start over what's the new normal and I want to leave that discussion because I think Auckland's a beautiful place we can be proud of it and we want to celebrate you know mm. we used to joke around you know Jeffers I mean yeah just another <laughs> fabulous Aucklander and we'd like I to warmly it. welcome everyone here you, you say I'm I love this city. They've given me so much. And I've got two young daughters and yeah. we're Aucklanders. Yeah, sure, we're, we're of Samoan heritage, mm. but this is our home and I want this to be special for them. And we've got some climate change issues we really need mm-hmm. to address. Let's get out of our cars. Let's catch the bus. Let's catch, you know, walk, walk as much as we can and cycle. I think there's good things ahead of us. Awesome. And I love that. Just another fabulous Aucklander because <laughs> I've only been in Wellington for three years and I, I get very homesick at times and I tell oh. everyone how much better Auckland is. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. Keep so, going, yeah. Arnie. <laughs> so you don't get any disagreement from me there. Well, thank <laughs> you so much for, for joining me. It's been a really interesting chat and I hope that we'll hopefully get you back at some point as you continue your, your bid for um, becoming the Auckland Mayor. So thank you, Efeso. Oh, kia ora, Go well. Right. Thanks.